What's up guys, it's Track, and we just got done with Q2 of the Foam Pro Tour up in New Jersey. And uh, at the end of that, we got to spend a lot of on-field time with this, the Jurassic World Blaster. It is now formally released, the Jurassic Pro at Walmart. And for 60 bucks, I think that this is one of the better movie tie-ins we've seen in the entirety of Foam Flinging World. But it is a Jurassic Park Blaster, which means that I can't help but sit here and think about how it could, how it could evolve. Maybe we could splice it into something scarier, better, bigger? I don't know. What do you think, Jeff? Life uh, finds a way. All right, guys, so this is the Jurassic Pro, the Jurassic World Dominion tie-in blaster. And before we start taking it apart, looking at the internals and seeing what we can improve ergonomically, I do just want to say I really dig the silhouette of the blaster. It is a movie-accurate a silhouette with a neon paint job so that it obviously doesn't get them in any uh, sort of trouble. But uh, before we start breaking it down, we've got to remove the barrel. That's a quick quarter turn and then pop off. Over here, there's two buttons, one on each side like so. And then we pull those and this comes down like that. I think the stock is really terrific. But as I mentioned in my review, the stock has a bad habit of flexing under, uh, under prime. So we're gonna you know, remove it aesthetically and see what we can do to maybe tactical this up just a little bit. If we're going to be butterflying it, we're going to have to slide off our front sight and our back sight. Again, I don't think there's anything wrong with either of these. Uh, they're just a little different than what we're going to be searching for. Now, uh, features that we definitely want to maintain are the bolt action. I think that that's sweet, but uh, things that can be frustrating are the longer mag release makes it hard to hit the adapter mag release occasionally. The safety button can be a pain to keep up with, particularly if you're not used to it. And then this is too small a Picteny rail to realistically do anything useful with, so we might adapt that as well. Other than that, a few cosmetic uh, and functional changes to our QOL, and uh, let's take it apart and see what's inside. So once the Phillips head screws are out, that's a pretty standard size one Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, you come in here, you remove this plate, you'll see that the handle, the grip scale, falls out immediately. Uh, you can get a really good look at this flat kind of uh, printing that they did on the blaster. It's not a sticker, it's not a decal, it's not a water transfer. They actually printed directly onto the plastic, which is sort of wild. And it immediately becomes apparent that a lot of this is going to be easy to fix. So the one thing that's kind of funky is that this is not a, uh, is not a tube, necessarily. I mean, it is a tube, but it's not... A, a perfect cylinder. It's an oval uh, cylinder, which is just kind of funky. We've got our, uh, our mag release here. That should be an easy fix. Uh, the entire trigger unit seems to come out as one independent piece, complete with the, uh, the safety mechanism inside it. Uh, so we'll have to do two more screws here and here to get inside. Let's go ahead and knock that out now. All right, so with that done, let's open this up. And uh, there's our safety as well as a pretty basic trigger system and then you can see that if you wanted to paint these pieces separately it looks like they're held on with panels but it might just be easier to sand them and go from there so we'll set that aside along with the safety keeping in mind that the two screws that held it together are the same size as the rest of the screws this back panel here is interesting uh, because while it definitely uh, looks like it's the kind of thing that you would have the plunger coming back into here. Uh, this is flat, so uh, I have a hard time believing that anything gets back there. I think it's just a cavity with a nubbin in it. More on that later. Uh, up here, this comes out pretty, pretty immediately, pretty easy, so we're going to set that aside as well. Uh, as far as the rest of the internals go, uh, the entirety of the top rail comes out as one piece. And... Uh, doesn't appear to be held on by much other than the D prime, which uh, exists within it. So we'll set that aside. Uh, and then we've got the priming sled, as well as uh, that actuates our bolt. Uh, our bolt does not have a skinny pusher in it, so we'll fix that as well. Let's pull this out for a mag release, because I think this has got to have a classic paint job. So um, two more screws here, one holding in sort of the connective piece between our barrel material, which appears to be just a standard. Uh, dart zone aluminum barrel and our uh, pusher mechanism. They've got a plastic piece that sort of lets you push uh, both air and the dart into the barrel. It's like they're, uh, they're chambering. A lot of us just chamfer our aluminum barrels so that we have a direct seal that way, but uh, that's not how they went about 
doing it. So uh, the catch is independent and quite robust. Uh, that's pretty good to see. And then this is uh, of note, kind of interesting. The plunger, like I said, is an oval and it's also sort of pinned here and here, which would make it very difficult to get in here and change up the uh, spring pattern. But uh, given that our focus is on half links, the way that this plunger breaks apart gives us a lot of opportunities here to, uh, to change up some parts, both internally with the pusher mechanism and uh, inside to make it a half dart only kind of prime, make it more comfortable in that way. Uh, other than that, got a couple of locks in here. Uh, these are slide locks uh, that we can just sort of work around, but now we have Two, uh, two panels ready for paint. Should be pretty exciting, let's go. All right, so we took a brief intermission to give this a really Jurassic, kind of classic Jurassic Park sort of paint job. We thought that, that would be cool. We did like a, a fade gradient here and then we wanted to make sure we got the red stripes in there. Should look pretty good when it's all said and done and if it doesn't, uh, we'd rather do that than try nothing at all. So one thing of note there is that the printed uh, kind of art deco on the side, while it looks really good, it came off uh, very easily under, you know, abrasion. So uh, it's pretty easy to sand it off and get a very flat surface if you wanted to do a painting or any sort of thing. This is a really good mural to do that on. Now, I want to start talking about the kit that we developed for this and then kind of the design language and ethos behind the kit. I know that some people are like, Drac, you make these mod guides and they're all about parts that you make now. And it's like, yeah, that's kind of how modding works now. Like a lot of it is 3D printed and our ability to print and provide those parts means that we can do things that are way cooler than it used to be when it was just like, all right, I guess go to Home Depot, get this CPVC, hit it with a heat gun, etc. So in a lot of ways, this has created a more technically consistent and deliverable product, which we're really proud of. So uh, we went ahead and we did a bunch of stuff. Uh, the kit comes with a lot of different parts in it, but we're gonna go through one by one and we're gonna talk about things that we could have done, things that we didn't do. Uh, and I guess there's no better part to start with than the plunger tube. So the plunger tube is very robust. You could pop these pins in the back, and get it open. However, once you open up the pins in the back, the system becomes a little less stable, a little less uh, consistently kind of bound. Uh, what you can do is you can pop this nubbin out and uh, it's held in with two O-rings, gives you a really good look at this if you wanted to add more lubrication, but the spring inside is very powerful. It is a pro blaster after all. It actually reminds me a lot of the prime weight of our, uh, our Chungus spring that we sell for the Aeon, but it's neither here nor there. Since we fire exclusively half lengths, out of ours, uh, we're gonna take this piece here and this piece that we sell, and this is what we call a slop remover because when you're priming, you have to prime first through that full length area and nothing happens when you're doing half links and then you prime all the way for the half length. So this just removes that part of the priming motion and uh, makes it a lot more comfortable to do uh, half length motions or at least we, we feel that way. So just a dot of super glue will do you and then you're gonna come in from the rear Set that in like that. It sets in like that. Uh, try to get any excess off like so. And then we will re-grease this before we put it back in. But right now, we're just gonna set it there to a uh, set. So set the plunger aside, because again, we're not doing a spring replacement on this. The spring is already very powerful and we don't wanna damage these clips popping off the back plate to get it a plunger that's already very well lubricated, solid O-ring, very strong spring. Uh, that's kind of part of the equation that has changed from previous you know, generations of modding where that would be the first thing that you would attack. Now it's pretty good. Uh, we also hate that we have to prime to remove our magazine. So we've gone ahead and this is not the same as a Nexus or an Aeon, despite what a couple of people have uh, hypothesized. And we designed this. This is our, uh, our Jurassic Pro. You can tell that that's the one if you have multiple kits from us because it says JP up here. Uh, and this is going to be our skinny pusher. And by narrowing it and maintaining the airflow, uh, you're still going to get a clean shot through to the dart, uh, just like this pusher, but you'll be able to remove a Talon magazine or a, uh, or a Pro magazine uh, without having to prime the blaster. Now to get at this, we have to remove the screws on this side, uh, and it will show you kind of this heat set insert here where you can tell that this is where the priming screws in. I think this is M4 threads, but don't quote me on that uh, because... We, uh, we're pretty happy with this as a bolt action primary after all. If you were gonna change the way that it primed aggressively, uh, at that point you should be using a different platform, right? There's no reason not to use 
a Nexus or a striker or something to that effect. So once you've taken these two panels off and exposed those heat set inserts, you can actually note that the entirety of the barrel mechanism, and the barrel is very short on this blaster. It's a pretty stubby barrel. This is the kind of thing that I would like to see an improvement for. We're not providing one at this time, uh, but I might come in later and add more barrel length to this. After all, this plunger has way too much power for this amount of barrel. Now, it is nice that this barrel uh, appears to be chamfered on both ends and finished in that way. So that's, you know, an improvement over other pro blasters. But then you look in here and you can see that there's a pin holding this pusher in. So to get that pin out, I've actually got a, uh, a Captain Slug roll pin from a Caliburn. I'm just gonna push on one end. And conveniently, since this is captured by these two parts, uh, it's not knurled, which is a big improvement over previous iterations. Now, you're going to use as much of the original kit uh, as you can in our kit, and that's specifically designed to keep the cost uh, savings down and to keep our kind of inventory flow easier. So you take the O-ring off of that, you have to replace it. There's only one place to put that one. And then there's two O-rings in the back, and you should be able to uh, try not to destroy the part, but they should. I might have to take a flathead screwdriver, and then these O-rings are gonna go in the back of ours to uh, to recreate that seal. And it is a little fickle. Don't, don't be embarrassed if it takes you a few tries because it takes me a few tries. The trick here is you don't wanna puncture these O-rings because they'll last a really, really long time. So the two kind of transparent ones go in the back, the black one goes in the front. They are different diameters, so keep that in mind. I have a little bit of slug slime here. I'm just, just a, like I said, just a dot will do you. But uh, a little bit there. A little bit there, go ahead, lube those. Try and use a different finger for your lubricant than you use for like cleanup of your uh, super glue. I find that that makes the entire build process a lot more pleasant. Now once you've done that, you're gonna reorient that in there. It'll click right into place. We designed it that way. Push your pin back through. You're gonna encounter a little bit of resistance there where it's pushing through our plastic, that's normal and take literally anything and just line it back up. Now it's captive, that's exactly where we want it to be. And we're gonna go ahead, screw these parts back on. This is a slightly longer mod guide, but I find that if the mod guide doubles as an installation guide, it's a lot easier from a customer service perspective. And it gives you guys a really long-winded and robust look at the internals so that you'll know uh, whether you choose to use our kit, somebody else's kit, uh, your own parts, maybe you want to try your luck with a heat gun, make your own skinny pusher, I don't recommend that, but however you choose to do it, um, I want you to have a really good look at the internals and how they fit originally and how you can remesh them. So I'm going to put that back in like that, etc. and so forth. Uh, I'm happy with the skinny pushers installation, and I want to start talking about the things that we're going to do that are going to start changing the overall ergonomic performance and uh, kind of how this thing is going to feel, function, and flow. So uh, to that end, let's go ahead and put this back in just really quick. This might be a free file on our Thingiverse because we're not selling these right now, but it is funny. I lost the insert panel uh, for my Jurassic Pro while I was halfway into this mod guide. It's sitting on the desk somewhere. I just can't find it. So we modeled up some and printed them in a, uh, in a deep red. We thought that that would look good. So that's just a fun fact. Uh, let's move on. So coming up next, we'll start with this. This is our safety delete part. Mine's printed in vertigo gray. Again, it replaces this original part. This part uh, is what turns off your trigger when the safety is pressed. Uh, so you kind of align this pin, this line here, with the line here down in the bottom. Push that into place. Whoop. Kind of slides into place. If you look at it from the other side, it's just going to seal that hole, give you the same sort of knurling uh, and aesthetic. But it should cover it up so that it's no longer doing its function. Now, another big issue that I had with the original Jurassic Pro is it had this tiny nubbin of faux Pictini, and that wasn't really good for anything. So our full kit comes with both of these, or you could purchase them individually. Uh, but we have this part, which just deletes that. You can see that just turns it into a smooth surface so that you could grip it this way or this way, however you want to do it. I also put one of these together, and this is a much longer, more useful segment of pick rail that when installed, like so, uh, provides a stronger anchor for the pick rail and extends out so much so that you have an actual usable length of pick rail. For this guide, we're gonna install this one, but just keep in mind that if you buy the kit, you actually just get both 
of them so you can pick and choose. Now, another thing that we're doing uh, that's gonna change the overall kind of grip and control system for this guy is traditionally, it has the stock like this. And no matter how I've primed it, I've gotten a little bit of wobble towards the side that I've primed with. And that's fair because it's plastic on plastic and it's moving super out of line with the prime. We're priming up here, so we wanna be in line with the prime. So to that end, I'm doing away with the stock, even though I really think the stock is cool. I experimented with ways to like cut the stock, flip the stock, make the stock into something else. And I'm still kind of noodling on that because now I have this piece and I think it's a really cool piece, but I don't know what to do with it. If you guys have suggestions, comment down below. But because I didn't like that stock solution, I had to do two things, two fixes. And I think that you really need to do them in Congress with one another. Otherwise, they don't look quite as clean. So one, we created a buffer tube style stock. This is a, you know, your standard M4 style stock that goes with all of the different Dart Zone Pro Blasters. It'll fit a lot of their stocks. Left plenty of different nubbins so that you can choose different links. And then all I can tell you is that the way that this is printed and assembled, we added a lot of hardware to it so that it has a lot of, you know, residual torsion strength and uh, you're not gonna break it priming into it. I know that 3D printed stocks, traditionally not super amazing. The Hummingbird suffers from that in particular, but these are very, very tough due to the amount of hardware and the infill pattern that we went with. So uh, to that end, that slides in right here. That's replacing this piece and the original blaster that was just kind of a nubbin cover, but it doubles as a way to hold your screws, right? And then obviously, if you're gonna replace the stock, uh, you can't just leave this gaping hole down here. Uh, so to that end, we've gone ahead and we've created a plug that kind of fits in here. I need to orient it correctly. And that's gonna clamshell in, it's very strong, and it gives you now a sling point attachment in addition to rounding off the back end of the grip so that it's not uncomfortable to grip because it has a hole in it. So uh, these two, I really feel like, and again, if you get the whole kit, they all come in there, uh, but I think that if you're gonna do this in sort of, sort of homebrew fashion where maybe you build this out of PVC and put like a, an old school style stock on it, you should also do something with like a polymer fill so that your grip doesn't have a hole cutting into the, the palm of your hand down here. So getting the rail back together, the top rail is pretty solid. You've gotta add this bar in like this. It creates a lever here, the spring rest is up here. And then you're gonna go in and cap it with this. And that just sort of captures it uh, like so. And now you have this switch up top, which when you push that back, allows this to, to deprime. Uh, so if the blaster is primed, this deprimes it, which is uh, kind of the whole purpose of that mechanism. I don't ever use it, but I also don't want a hole in the top of my blaster. So I'm going to go ahead and get that back in loosely because I don't want to, uh, to interfere with getting my internals in. Now this is of course the original mag release and the issue with a mag release that's this long, and it's not really an issue per se, it's kind of a personal preference thing, is that when it's this long, sometimes you hit the mag release for this instead of the adapter. And so to that end, I like to shrink this down to this geometry, and by shrinking it by almost like 40%, you, uh, you're less inclined to tap your adapter release when you're trying to get to your actual mag release to release your half-length mag. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and give this a dot of lubricant. If you ever find that printed parts, no matter how you know nicely they're printed, uh, are interfering, uh, a, little, a little dot of silicone oil or grease goes a long way. And so now uh, we should be very smooth pushing forward Oh yeah, that's uh, exactly what we want. So at this point, this has had plenty of time for the super glue to dry. Uh, we can go ahead and just kind of push fit it back in like so. Align this so that it's gonna fit with the original catch. That goes up and in like that, kind of sits like that. And the whole system should drop in behind the plunger area like so. Interestingly enough, oval means that this fits only one direction. So that's just kind of cool. The, the oval shaped cylinder is, is fascinating to me. So when aligning this, you're gonna to wanna to pop everything out a little bit. This goes over this and this lines up with this and then you can actually screw uh, those components down to lock them into place. This is gonna pop up a little. I wanna make absolutely sure that that mates up against the slop remover and then we have to kind of move forward just a wee bit so that everything aligns with its proper uh, proper housing down in here. That's good. That kind of primed into place. The catch fell out temporarily, but that's okay. And everything is aligned now. So that's pretty good. All you have to do is add back in the trigger. 
Uh, I feel like if I was gonna make a short throw trigger for this, a printed version would not be nearly strong enough and I would wanna do it on SLS. And right now I'm busy printing Pathfinder triggers in SLS, so I'll let somebody else take care of that. But other than that, we've now dramatically kind of changed the silhouette of the kit. There's two more components that I wanna add to this beast before we're said and done. So let's uh, button it up, go ahead and grab our other shell half here, our other grip half. I'll show you those components in just a second. Alrighty guys, so now the blaster is buttoned up and looking pretty prehistoric, if I don't say so myself. Uh, I wanna mention that we're gonna do like four more quick add-ons. They should all be pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. As long as we're changing this mag release, we like to shorten this one up just a little bit as well, uh, maintaining that length, but uh, settling the curve. So we add this piece here. This is our uh, secondary mag release, and we wanna put that on here to just kind of consistency the entire system. It's sort of a personal grape. Then we went ahead and we painted this. Uh, you can absolutely use the tong kind of taser adapter on a, uh, a blaster like this, but I thought that this was a little too cartoonish, a little too bulky for my taste, and I actually don't like the taser tongs, but I wanted to kind of keep the spirit of that, do something very sci-fi uh, with good lines, sort of match the uh, spirit of the blaster, and still uses uh, detents so that it's kind of a compliant mechanism, and this is going to pop on and so that's kind of a compliant device there. I was showcasing this on Instagram. Goes back, now we have orange, green, and then the gray, which will tie in with the vertigo gray. I think we should have really good uh, aesthetic consistency there. Other than that, by adding this rail, I can add a foregrip. This is just a foregrip that we sell in the shop. It's nothing special. It's like some kind of Magpul knockoff. Uh, set that over there. And then, uh, then some sights. I like our sights better than their sights. No offense, Dart Zone. As a final thing, we sell these over on the shop as well. This does not necessarily come in the kit, but this is a you know full polymer stock, pretty standard mill serp nonsense. Uh, attaches pretty easily. You gotta pull down to get it on, and then once it's on, compresses like that, extends like that, it's a stock. What do you want? All right, so we're in the, I'm not gonna do it to you guys again. So this is our Jurassic Pro paint job. This is our Jurassic Pro kit. Like I said, it maintains that kind of long boy look, uh, but now it's looking very reptilian. I really, I dig this vibe. Uh, because of the skinny pusher, we could throw this in at any time, although I think it's a completely full magazine, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna prime anyway. Uh, you'll note there that in priming, this was very, uh, very stiff, no flex in terms of priming back against this. So uh, forward. And that's out pretty far, but once you're shouldered on there and you're using your dominant hand like this and then adding the grip, again, you could do it this way or this way, but I like having the grip. I'm gonna put a few over because theoretically, we shouldn't have changed our performance too terribly much. After all, we didn't do anything other than the slop remover killing a tiny, almost negligible amount of dead space. Other than that, we just kind of applied fresh lube, right? So let's uh, throw a few over like this, 131. 129, 135, 136, 133, 128. And uh, we should be able to pop that out. Looks like we got about half left. Put it back in like so. And uh, target is a reasonable distance away. Let's line up the sights. Little low. There we go. So uh, pretty dialed in overall. I mean, I'm very, I like the Jurassic Pro a lot. I like bolt action. I think that it's a completely different sort of muscle set in your, your reload. I like this stock attachment. I like that it breaks down into something pretty small. If you wanted to use it for something like HVZ or something to that effect, you might want to tune it down a little bit, which does mean getting into that plunger system. And that just wasn't something that I needed to fool with for my use case. But uh, overall, I think that it's a very handsome blaster and I really like uh, this kind of mod guide for it. I like our kit a whole, whole bunch. And you know, while it is my channel and it's my responsibility to kind of take care of my staff and make sure that we promote the products that we design, I feel like it would be disingenuous to my audience, not to mention that I'm sure there'll be a bunch of other kits for this thing. Some of them will be more expensive. Some of them will be cheaper. We try and design uh, just to a math formula for how we price a lot of our parts. And as opposed to our blasters, like we really try and keep these as affordable as we can so that anybody could modify using our guides the way that we do. But uh, even if you're not planning on modifying your Jurassic Pro, that's a really cool look at the internals. I think fascinating things from this product are the oval plunger tube being in this orientation, not trying to make a thinner blaster, just trying to create a different geometry to be closer to that movie 
movie accurate silhouette. And then beyond that, I mean, it's just really cool. It's cool to see a bolt action pro blaster. It makes me wonder if there might not be a bolt action like pro pro blaster in the future that, uh, that you know, takes on that real sniper category. But that's just a hypothetical. If there's anything like that in the pipes, I'm sure that you'll see it here first. I just uh, try my hardest to get these reviews out to you and these mod guides out to you in as timely a fashion as I can based on the popularity of the products behind them. But uh, that's our Jurassic Pro kit. As always, much love. Nerf on. Drack out.